And lastly, the sign of the basilisk. Those born under this sign are dour and often gloomy. They're natural-born intimidators and good at sensing motives. Their birthstone is ruby, the stone of substance, protecting property as well as flesh. More rotten creatures. Lily's just glad that that was the last of them. She's still sure that she's dragon. There's even an artifact called the Basilisk's Mask, a bronze mask carved to resemble a leering reptile, to defend against gaze attacks, among other things. The sound of a rusted metal door opening. Lily heard it. So did Lanou. Yet nobody sees anything. Or anyone. Yeah, you knew something had to have come out, but I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, here it is. Animated armor. Got all those immunities, I guess, as a construct. I'm not sure if there's one in here. To yeah. Just, it didn't come out yet. All right. Well. I'm not sure if, uh, let's see, we'll try it. Negative energy. No, I was making a save. Bones needs to see if animated armors come in pairs. Yeah, there's still one here in the corner. Here it is. Try it again. Negative energy. Wow, what was that? Oh, bless. Lily takes a moment to pull the stopper from a moderate healing elixir. Constructs like the animated armor, which have no constitution score, just like undead, share many of the same immunities to poison, disease, and mind-affecting effects, such as being charmed, confused, dazed, dominated, frightened, paralyzed, put to sleep, and <laughs> stunned. They're also not subject to critical hits of dual damage, ability damage, energy drain, or death from massive damage, though they are destroyed outright if brought to zero hit points. Now that Lanou has finished explaining all 12 signs of the Wheel of Stars, Lily finally asks what sign her mystic was born under. Lanou smiles sweetly as she pulls a small diamond pendant by its chain from behind her mail and proudly displays it for her mistress. Though Lily can't remember whose birthstone it is. Dusty Diviner has to remind her. The stone of strength and resiliency. The Hydra. Lily had guessed right and laughs out loud at the thrill of it. Though all she remembers is optimistic and durable. What does it really mean? The new explains, Hydra's the most resilient people imaginable. Nothing gets them down for very long. They tend to spring back from even the most crushing setback, as confident and chipper as always. They're praised for their positive attitude their ability to find the silver lining in every cloud. They keep smiling no matter what, always showing their best side. Lanou reminds her mistress she's not being immodest, only thorough in her description of the traits and behaviors most common to people born under the sign of the Hydra. Lily, sure, she embellished it a little bit, but doesn't mind. Lily asks if she has the Ring of the Hydra, realizing too late 
only after she asked that she would have shown it if she did. No, but maybe one day. The news heard that they could be purchased for less than 20,000 gold. Alright, the door is opening on its own. This can't be a good sign. Alright, the wolf's on it. Yeah, this side opened as well. It's in there. Just hasn't noticed us. Strange. So Lily's dusty diviner is not only a priestess of the Lady of Dreams, but a misbehaving mystic as well. She's not sure, but she can't imagine the Sayani Mumbo clergy back at her home of Everesca would be pleased to hear one of their faithful has taken to studying the Wheel of Stars. Lily's fascinated, not only in Lanu's little secret, but in the science itself. Lily can't resist. She agrees to let Lanou draw detailed natal astrological charts for her. But the charts require a place, date, and even hour of birth. Lily's only sure of the date. She guesses the rest, not revealing to Lanou, of course, that they're speculative. Candlekeep, at dusk, in the year... Lily makes her holy defender swear on the silver chalice of Sayani Mumbo to never repeat what her mistress is about to tell her. Even here in the depths of the warrens of the dam, deep beneath the beggar's nest, Lily whispers the year in Lanou's ear. Lily watches her face as she calculates her mistress's age. Though, when she doesn't look surprised, Lily's almost insulted. She must look older than she thinks. A wand of lesser summoning, imbued with charges for summon creature two. That is, it's a dire boar, on a stick. Good for emergencies, Lily supposes. Lily asks how long drawing up these natal charts will take. Hours. Oh, well, Lily insists she draw them up at the first opportunity back at the Moonstone Mask. The three of them, herself, Rusty and Dusty, could even make a bit of a party out of it. A starry soiree. It looks like his mistress is going to have to muster the courage to use a key. There's a zombie here at the door, obviously. Alright, it's a huge chamber. Alright, here's the focus that uh, Jared was talking about. It would not take much to shatter the stressed container. Well, I think we can probably guess that Golan's probably in here. First thing Lily's gonna want to do is probably destroy that. Oh boy. This is not good. And there's Golan. The water Davian Yanti. Alright. 
determined not to be captured. <laughs> Alright. Otherwise, well, there's still some zombies here. Alright. Magic missile for the pedestal. Alright. It's destroyed. Hopefully that weakens her. Gotta make sure that you just follow me and stay everybody's close. in here. Okay. Mouse. All right, dear. I'm getting to it. Flame arrow. Magic missile. Alright, another magic missile. Or I think there's just some straight zombies. The defaced stone altar marked with the symbol of Siric further defaced into oblivion. And Golan, the water Devin Yuanti, slain. The only mystery is the eye. She said she saw the coming of the eye. Likely just mad. The Inspector General does the grisly honors, carefully cutting out Golan's heart with a dagger. Curiously, as if she's done it before. The Hazel Healer grimaces as she hears the arteries sever, one by one. A flask of holy water, though the Cleric and Curls claims it's of a rare purity. And an enchanted scimitar. Marek the Hammer could use the holy water to forge a golden sickle, Though, the Desert Wind Scimitar requires an amantite, and will it doubt she'll ever find any more of the rare metal ore? Almost as unlikely as Ironwood. Cursed Warrior. Alright. A new type of undead that I don't think we've seen. And it's pretty tough, but I think <laughs> they got it. A cursed warrior. Bones can't taste the difference, but Lanu knows better. They're called cursed because they've been cursed by a spellcaster's wish or miracle. The curse itself transforms them into undead, trapping their souls and not letting them die as a mortal. Clear audience and clairvoyance. Only 127 more to go. Otherwise, Inspector General Black seems to be finished here. There are some remaining vestiges of the cult of Cyric, like the Jawless Skull pedestals. The Lady of Murder would destroy those too if she had the means to. But there doesn't seem to be a single soul left. No strife leaders or sworn priests of the Dark Sun Cyric or Gul'dan. The Warrens of the Damned has been returned to the quiet, unhallowed ground Lily presumes it's always been. Not to mention, her holy defender looks tired.
Lilu looks shocked when Lily tells her all about the twisted Twins of Tear. She closes her eyes and holds on to her mistress's cloak as they use the stone. 